good day. My name is Rafael Kevin Ainagal, PhD in Science Education, major in Biology. I'll be presenting the topic Ethnobiology under BioSci 630 through our professor Peter Ernie Paris, PhD. Well, ethnobiology is the scientific study of dynamic relationships among people, biota, and the environment. As a multidisciplinary field, ethnobiology integrates archaeology, geography, systematics, population biology, ecology, mathematical biology, anthropology, pharmacology, nutrition, conservation, and sustainable development. The diversity of perspectives in ethnobiology is our greatest strength, and it allows us to examine complex dynamic interactions between human and the natural system. Ethnobiology is the study of the complex relationships that exist between living beings and the cultural systems, and that encompasses both in the past as well as in the current societies. In other words, ethnobiology studies traditional knowledge and practice that result from countless relations established between human societies, their cultures, and other living beings. So when you say traditional knowledge, also known as ethnobiological knowledge or traditional ecological knowledge or simply local knowledge, it is defined as a cumulative body of knowledge, practices, and cultural beliefs about the relationships of living beings with one another and with the environment. Ethnobiologists study social ecological systems through the lens of heterogeneous disciplines from natural sciences, social sciences, as well as humanities. And when it comes to research, it involves cognitive processing, cultural transmission, and biocultural evolution. So what are the research objectives in ethnobiology? Well, in the past, many ethnobiologists concentrated on cataloging long lists of plants and animals with their associated preparations and uses. Now, um, in contemporary research, the objectives have become more process-oriented. For example, we now study how species are domesticated and the origins and development of agriculture, the management of useful plants and animal populations, as well as the process of traditional knowledge acquisition, as well as organization. Now, what are the central priorities and concerns of ethnobiology? Being a rapidly growing field of research, gaining professional, student, and public interest, um, there is a need in ethnobiology to explore modern methodology appropriate for studying people, biota, and environmental interactions. Methodologies in ethnobiology are varied and it depends on the area of study. So most of the methods being used are participant observation, informant inquiry, coupled with techniques and data from archaeology, molecular population, ecological community, and ecosystem biology. Of course, indigenous people are becoming increasingly empowered within ethnobiology to define research, development, and conservation priorities, and to participate in the research and education efforts associated with ethnobiology. In science education, aside from the aspects mentioned above, Ethnobiology fulfills the important role of assisting teachers by its methodological researching procedures. As a result, teachers could elaborate and implement teaching strategies which include and consider the knowledge belonging to the student's sociocultural means to dialogue with scientific knowledge. The Code of Ethics under International Society of Ethnobiology is the one that is officially adopted by the Society of Ethnobiology Board with this statement. In research, ethnobiology has been defined as the study of the direct interrelationships between human populations and the plants and animals in their environment. So specifically, if it's about plants, that is ethnobotany, and if it's about animals, that's going to be ethnozoology. Well, there are other disciplines under that, which includes ethnoecology, traditional medicine, ethnoveterinary, traditional knowledge, socio-ecological, and ethnopharmacology.
So many ethnobiological studies deal with the nomenclature, that is the naming of organisms as well as terminology, and the classification systems apply to organisms in non-English and non-scientific terms, but with reference to the English and scientific considerations. Here are some branches of ethnobiology. Now, I will be presenting the research study Ethnobotanical Studies on Indigenous Communities in the Philippines, Current Status, Challenges, Recommendations, and Future Perspectives by Mark Lloyd Dapar and Gracibio Jonathan D. Alejandro from the University of Santo Tomas. Now, in their study, ethnobiology is defined as an interdisciplinary field where, of course, plant and people are interacting. Ethnobotanical based selection of medicinal plants has gained in popularity according to them and was actually being used to develop and discover new drugs. This practice has raised important issues on the traditional knowledge of indigenous people. Traditional medical knowledge of medicinal plants and their use by indigenous healers are not only essential for the conservation of cultural traditions and biodiversity but also for community healthcare and drug development in the present and in the future. And thus, medical ethnobotany is now widely used and studied across all disciplines. In the Philippines, we started off with herb doctors such as arbolarios and herbolarios who, who are actually using local plants to treat individuals. Early Filipinos have extensive knowledge on medicinal plants and always have an antidote for every poison. They also believe that sickness and diseases are caused by disharmony with the spiritual world and in order to be healed, gods must be pleased through incantations, rituals, and sacrifices. A babaylan, usually a female, becomes the mediator between the physical and the spiritual world. Now, in this case, traditional medicine is a knowledge system compiled together by different generations from different societies before the age of modern medicine. This is also known as folk or indigenous medicine. In the Philippines, we have a lot of um, flora and biodiversity and medicinal plant species were scientifically validated for safety and efficacy. This time, I'll be featuring another ethnobiology research with the title, What is the Purpose of Ethnobiology in Biology Teacher Training by Jailsa Acosta Santos Baptista from the Department of Education, State University of Ferro de Santana, Brazil. The abstracts is this one. Now, the study is focused on science teaching and um, it is actually important for teachers to identify students' cultural knowledge according to this. So this kind of identification promotes opportunities for intercultural dialogue between the scientific knowledge and the knowledge of the sociocultural backgrounds of the students that they take to the classrooms. So ethnobiology studies the knowledge and concepts of living beings developed in certain communities that live in direct contact with nature. In other words, ethnobiology studies traditional knowledge and practice that result from countless relations established between human societies, their culture, and other living beings. Now, it is important that people will be able to understand ethnobiology and how people interact with the world around them, both, um, that's physically, symbolically, cognitively, and effectively. The research objectives of the study are as follows. First, um, the major objective, the purpose of this paper is to present and discuss the purpose of ethnobiology into the training and pedagogical practice of biology teachers. The research questions are as follows. How do science teachers conceive ethnobiology and does the inclusion of ethnobiology contribute to teaching practices that consider promote the concept of cultural diversity in classrooms. For methodology, the study was developed in Ferra de Santana City in Brazil. The research methodology was purely qualitative and based on semi-structured interviews. There were 14 teachers who initially signed for the participation but only 9 were able to complete the training. For data collection, so interviews were collected and conducted in classrooms of the State University of Ferro de Santana. 
the questions revolve around the following. Do you seek to determine what cultural knowledge that students bring to the classroom? If yes, which method do you adopt? What is ethnobiology and what is its research methodology? For data analysis, um, transcription and thematic analysis of their answers were done. For results and discussions, um, first for category one, the co their concept of ethnobiology. Before the course, they would actually say that um, this is the study of biological relationships. However, after the course, they would say it is a type of knowledge, a science that aims to explain the relationships between human beings and cultural traditions. So, in this case, there is an improvement in their conception of ethnobiology. The second question, importance of investigating students' traditional knowledge and its relationships with ethnobiology prior to the course. It, was, it is a way to get information about something and add it to the scientific knowledge that we have. After the course, there is a more detailed, a more comprehensive answer. Sure, now I am ready to try. I am already trying to appreciate the student's culture and tradition as much as possible. What they already bring with them to the classroom within certain teaching content, it is important. To conclude, teachers' answers after their participation in the training course involving ethnobiology revealed that they expanded their conceptions identifying the science as the study of complex relationships established between human beings and other living beings. It can be claimed that ethnobiology contributes to science teaching and consequently to the science teacher training, providing the teachers with the opportunity of epistemological reflections involving the different knowledge systems that are present in classrooms. So ladies and gentlemen, this is my presentation for ethnobiology.